Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we want to spend a little bit of time talking about the uh, Ubuntu Snap Desktop that has been going around and buzzing around the news. So you follow this channel, you know I'm not a huge fan of Snaps. Uh, I've been moving away from favorite from Ubuntu as they seem to be moving and definitely into a more of a corporate model and a lot less into a FOSS model. And uh, of course, I've been vocal about some of the issues and concerns with all of that. Uh, but today I want to give you my perspectives on this article that just came out this week on OMG Ubuntu. All Snap Ubuntu desktop will be available next year. I want to go ahead and talk about what's going on here. I want to talk about the good points, the bad points, and uh, dispel some of the myth running around. Because whether or not we have arguments or interest in these things, we also don't want to be spreading misinformation about what's going on. And so let's go ahead and talk about this principle. So what's going on here? All Snap Ubuntu desktop will be available next year. Now the first link here, uh, which they're hiding behind a discus link to track clicks, goes to an article talking about the cups um, the cups drivers being a snap package. So uh, Ubuntu plans to switch cups printing stack to snap. I can't remember if I discussed this or not. I, I just don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but um, of course, cups is how the how printers are managed on Linux, at least one way, the primary way printers are managed on Linux. And so taking out all of the printing devices and replacing them with a snap could cause a lot of problems for downstream distributions that choose not to be overly dependent on snaps. And snaps do have some positives, but they have some major negatives. If you're new to the channel, I have several videos about what the negatives are with very, very fine details, solid evidence, solid receipts. Just a very, very, very brief summary here, and you can search out some of the other videos for a, a more depth. Snap packages themselves are open source, but their distribution model is proprietary and centralized. Basically meaning that Ubuntu and Canonical have full control of the distribution methods, which means it is open and susceptible to some form of man-in-the-middle attack if you're wanting to utilize a snap package because even though the package itself might be open source, the distribution model is not, and that raises some of the concerns. Secondly, there are a lot of snap packages that are not official compiled by a lot of people, and so the snap store still to this day looks a lot like the old Windows store. If you remember the Windows store, I don't know how it looks now, but when it first came out and all sorts of weird Chinese developers were creating all sorts of these quasi-official apps, and then you didn't really know the difference, and your whole phone was a buggy mess, that is happening with snaps i can point you towards software packages that there's multiple versions floating around none of them are by the original developer and the stores just become littered with this kind of stuff thirdly they do not audit the specific software what's going in basically the same way google play store which gets piles and piles of malware they approve the person and then they rely on the person having good clean code well there is a case just in the weekly news roundup this week where an app gets approved and within, I think it's six months to a year or so, it's distributing full-blown malware because the developer is trusted by Google. Snap is taking that same approach. We're not auditing all of the code. That's too much code, they say. We're just trusting the developer. And that is exactly how this new model of distributing malware, where you have a good solid application, you've been using it, and a forced update, and point four snaps, auto update, very hard to disable. I guess it's easy. It's disableable, but by default, snaps auto update as soon as there's an update. Very easy to push malware out to a system. There's four primary reasons why I'm not a huge fan of snaps. So what's going on here? An all snap Ubuntu desktop will be available next year. Let me be very, very clear. This is not the Ubuntu desktop that we have been downloading. This is not the basic Ubuntu system that you would download and install, you're not going to see 
the whole desktop be a snap. This is explicitly designed for Ubuntu Core. So Ubuntu Core is, if you go to Linode or DigitalOcean and you install Ubuntu, you're likely getting Ubuntu Core, at least as an option. The Ubuntu Core is close to, and they are migrating it to effectively an immutable desktop where it's really designed and optimized for running server-based applications, not really designed to run as a desktop, but they're adding a snap package to add a desktop via the snap functionality to Ubuntu Core. So when you download it in the next LTS, is what they're projecting this is going to come out, uh, the 2404, um, 2404 it would be, you'll have the option to download your, your full regular main deb-based package or your Ubuntu core package now for a main system, which has the ability to install the desktop as a snap. So on that basis, this is not as big of a deal as some people are making it out to be. But what it is that we have to start looking at and we have to consider in this basis is that does this empower them to the future, adding more and more and more main primary core system features of the operating system as snaps, just like moving cups over? I think moving cups to a snap package on Ubuntu is a way bigger deal than the Ubuntu desktop itself because that starts messing with the underlying systems that the average person starts expecting on your average computer to work, not reliant quite so much on the uh, on the, the software inside of the basic repositories. And for people or distros like Linux Mint that does not ship snaps, now they have to find another solution for that. For this reason, the good news is we are seeing more and more distros abandoning the Ubuntu base in favor of the Debian base, especially since, as we covered in a previous Debian video, that the newer model, when Bookworm comes out, they will have the ability to have the 6.1 LTS kernel, uh, so that's up more than, than what they would have otherwise, and they have the ability to have uh, non-free software isolated from non-free firmware. So if you don't want the non-free software, but you do want your graphic card to work, you can install that without possibly compromising your system with other non-free software. These are things that's making Ubuntu a better system, which uh, dis distros have been moving away from. I have heard, although I've not researched, I've not actively looked for it, I have heard Vanilla OS is moving from Ubuntu to Debian Bookworm. Armbian is moving, uh, the, it is one for Raspberry Pis and other ARM-based systems. It's moving from uh, from an Ubuntu base to the Bookworm base. Peppermint, of course, recently moved from Ubuntu uh, back to uh, the Debian base. I think it's time for Linux Mint team to start focusing more and primarily on the LMDE rather than the Ubuntu based as Ubuntu starts stripping more and more core principles out of the desktop. So that's what this article is about. So it's talking here more about uh, immutable desktops. We're talking about uh, a snap-based desktop environment on the system, which, of course, is going to be their modified GNOME. But after this article came out, so this article came out like Tuesday, and I think Tuesday at the time I'm uh, reporting this video it was the 30th. Well, the day after from actual the Ubuntu blog, now they're starting talking about Ubuntu Core as the full migration into an immutable desktop base. This is exactly why they're doing this, so that they can have an immutable Ubuntu option called Ubuntu Core, where you can still have a desktop experience and a, a the core system in this case will be designed to work with a good desktop experience. So you'll be able to get all this out, moving in the proper direction, and then you're already set up and ready to go because the trend is immutable desktops. We have Nix OS. We have, uh, I believe, Vanilla is immutable. We have Fedora. Uh, we've had this mass proliferation of these immutable desktops showing up lately. And so it's worth looking at uh, in those senses here. So this article actually goes through what is a... a 
uh, immutable desktop. We've covered it before in the channel. We're not going to take the time to read through this whole article. I will have it linked down in the description here below if you'd like to see it. So uh, basically the immutable desktop, it's read only. It has atomic updates. It is predictable and it isolates all of the applications. The benefits, it's more secure, more stability, very reproducible and easier to manage. The drawbacks, reduce flexibility, limited compatibility. There are higher storage requirements and the developer experience experience and eh, that's going to depend on what you're doing a lot more difficult to tweak small resources on your system in an immutable system so then then they talk about the architecture of it chrome os is one so this architecture has um and this is the way nix os works too i'll point out so they have the running os and they have the updating os in the background and then the updating os will be ready for use and then once you reboot it it simply swaps them around so that now the secondary operating system is the primary one running and then the other one sits in a in a bay waiting to either be updated used or reverted back to here's fedora uh, Silver Blue and OS Tree. Uh, so we have running OS, updated OS, and then the pr couple previous images. So this is a little bit more stable than the Chrome OS option because if something messes with this one, you you know you only have one fallback. This actually keeps a few extra fallbacks. Nix OS, like I said, works more like Chrome OS. Fedora Silver Blue OS Tree works over there. Here's Micro OS and uh, ButterFS snapshots. Uh, so here's snapshots running OS, rebooting it. We have different snapshots running into it. So this is where we get. And then the snaps uh, and flat packs, but snaps and flat packs both work well with this type of system, as do app images. So it does make sense for Ubuntu to be pushing out an immutable desktop with the immutable desktop as a snap package because everything inside of the immutable system is itself a snap pack. Uh, this makes this actually makes it a little bit more flexible if you think about it in, in these terms. So think of it this way. All right, if I want to experiment with different desktop environments and you have a snap for GNOME, you have a snap for Plasma, you have a snap for Cinnamon, then you can actually have your core OS not change. If you ever want to change your desktop, you can just add the one snap, take the other snap away. Way easier than intermingling all your files, all your configurations, all your settings, which is a challenge. You can run multiple different desktops on most Linux systems and then boot into whichever one you want. But sometimes those configuration files will mess around with stuff and it becomes very difficult to get figured out what exactly you need to fix to make things working right. This would actually solve that problem of having a little bit better methodology for having multiple different desktop environments or swapping desktop environments should you want to. So overall, I don't think this is this horrible, bad idea. I don't think it's going to pollute the basic Debian Ubuntu any more than the rest of the world is with these mass proliferation of immutable desktops. As I've said before, though, immutable desktops are not really for me at this point in time. I don't really want them as they are too restricting for the development work that I am doing with my clients on a day-to-day -day basis. So those are my thoughts about it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. But before we leave, I want to highlight our sponsor for this video is Malleable Computers. So this is where you can go and get a custom laptop built. You can pay the extra 130 bucks for Windows if you'd want to, but any of these computers you can actually get pre-installed with Linux. So right now at the time of this video, they are supporting a few different Linux distributions. These do change on a regular basis. We have Ubuntu, we have Kubuntu, Linux Mint, and a few other ones out there as well. So uh, if you can head on over there and uh, head on over to my link, tlm.li forward slash malleable, and you can look at and customize a good Linux laptop for you. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.